rolling now and I ain't never going back down. Coming up on football tonight, Lafayette finally gets to play a game this fall. The Irish crossing the river to take on Atchison. Up in Rosendale, it's a battle of two top 10 eight-man football programs, the Golden Eagles visiting North Andrew. And the regular season starts across the river over in Kansas. Highlights from Troy coming up on football tonight. Welcome into football tonight. I'm Chris Roush. Week number two, that's Mitchell Wibrol. He's back again. Week number two, we didn't scare you off of week number one. No, I'm happy to be back. And I think like a lot of the teams this week, I'm a little more prepared. So we'll see how it Did goes. Did that first week age you a little bit? A little bit. I think I, I'm a little five years older now. So we'll see. <laughs> five years older? Well, you're about the same age. Yeah. <laughs> I'm old. All right, you want to go ahead and get started? Central coming off a loss to Fort Osage to open the season. Nine seconds left in the first half of this one. North Kansas City up 22-0. Central in the red zone. Can't get anything going. Three seconds now trying to punch it in, but they are driven back to half ends. Trotter not too happy with his team. Second half, Central starts with the ball. Hand off to Gabe Fields, and he has an opening. Sheds two tackles before getting taken down. Hornets able to stop the drive and get the ball back in Central territory. But penalties pushing back the Hornets, looking for the quick screen. Lane Nigus, through, though meeting the receiver at the line, forcing the punt. But North Kansas City would go on to take this one 38-0. Lafayette fighting Irish, finally able to start their season. One via forfeit last week, take on Atchison tonight. Irish won 28-7 a year ago, second quarter. Jaron Saunders takes the snap, rushes the right side, finds Xander Mace open, fighting for the first down. And then Saunders again. This time finding Kingston Oliver, who makes the open field catch. Atchison looking to stop Lafayette before going into the half. Lafayette inching closer to the red zone. Saunders with a third complete pass of the drive. Wade and Lippold making the catch, finding his way into the end zone, but coming up just short. Then Lippold with a chance to finish it off. One more shot for Lafayette here before the end of the first half. He able to finish it, fights his way in. Touchdown, Irish are 30 21 at the break. Atchison with the opportunity to score, but Lafayette nearly picking off the pass in the first half. Lafayette goes on to win. They're now 2 0 with a 50 21 victory. Some non conference Midland Empire Conference scores to pass along. Sixth ranked in Class 2, Maryville falling to number five, Harrisonville 28 20. And then Benton falling to Pleasant Hill 50 19. Up in Savannah tonight we go. Savages take on the Lathrop Mules. Savannah student sa section rocking one of the rowdiest groups around. They're having fun. Six nothing Savannah at the half. Savage start with the football. Cade Chappelle bulldozing his way forward. Same possession. Weird few plays here. Miscommunication fumble. Mules recover. But Savannah faithful. They're still going strong in the crowd. They want to see their Savages get the victory. Lathrop ensuing drive. Mason Adwell running for his life. Watch Brandon Davison. Able to pop the ball loose and go straight up in the air, but Mason McFarland dies on it for the save for Lathrop. But the Mules drive ends quickly. An interception here at the third quarter ends the Mules' hopes for points. Defensive game ends with Savannah getting a 6 0 victory. Now let's go ahead and welcome in the head coach of the Savannah Savages, Kevin Kopecki. Coach, first off, thanks for coming on. Congratulations on the victory. Uh, kind of a defensive battle a little bit, wasn't it tonight? 
Definitely was. Uh, thanks for having us on. You know, it really wasn't the most uh, pretty win, but uh, we'll take that over an ugly loss, I guess. I was there for about the third quarter, and you know, it was kind of a weird couple of possessions there, just kind of the, the turnovers back and forth. But what did you see from your guys defensively to kind of keep Lathrop off the scoreboard tonight? You know, I think we did a good job uh, pressuring them from the outside. Our defensive ends did a good job, and our pass coverage, we knew it was going to get tested tonight. Uh, you know, traditionally, Lathrop has been a real heavy run team. They have a new coach this year, as we all know, and uh, they're throwing the ball around quite a bit. They threw more passes than we did, and our defensive back was definitely – uh, tested, but uh, our kids did a good job uh, when they needed to. We we won the turnover battle. They had a lot more plays than we had. They almost ran 70 to, we didn't even run, I think, 46. I mean, they had the ball a long time. Our defense was out there a long time, not ideal, but uh, our kids did a great job. Yeah, and even though it was 6-0, uh, what can you take from the offense going into next week just to build off of it? Well, it's kind of upsetting. Last week we did the same thing. We kind of shoot ourselves in, in our own foot. Um, you know, not that Excelsior Springs and, and Lathrop didn't have something to do with that. They're two pretty good football teams. Uh, but, you know, we're really hurting ourselves, and we got to get that cleaned up. Uh, our defense is there right now. You know, a lot of coaches would say your defense is probably a little more ahead of the offense early in the season. Uh, and that's probably the case in our program right now. But we got to get that taken care of. We've got a good Kirksville team coming here next week. And uh, we've got to be able to move the ball, quit hurting ourselves, and score some points. Coach, a good job to hear on that, on this last question here. Is, is that just about repetition maybe for that offense? Like you said, defense is usually ahead of the offense early in the season. Is it just about getting reps or, or just kind of fundamental stuff too? I think it's a little bit of both, and I don't think we've really found ourselves. We ran the ball a little bit more tonight. We weren't quite as spread as we had been the week before. And just I don't know if in our DNA if we're a true spread team here. We've got a lot of tough kids, a lot of people up front that want to run the football. And, you know, uh, you, anybody that knows Savannah and knows our school, we've, uh, we, we've got some – some toughness up here, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, I don't know exactly what we need to do to move the ball. we got to figure something out pretty quick. Savannah getting a 6 nothing victory. Defensive battle, physical battle tonight. Kev Kevin Kopecki, thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right, let's go out on Highway 36. Cameron Dragons hosting Leakin Prep. Both teams coming off a week one victory. We'll pick up in the action late in the first half. Alex Zembe drops back, dumps it off to his left for Dominic Hurst. Hurst with a nice gain, but the Dragons can't capitalize on the drive. Coming up empty, Lincoln Prep looking to put a nice drive together to end the half. Zach Shelby rolling to his right, finds Antonio Jones cutting across the field, picks up the first and puts the Blue Tigers in scoring position. After a timeout to stop the clock, Shelby hands it off to John Price. Price punches it in for six more, and Blue Tigers take this one 60-7. And more Midland Empire teams in non-conference play tonight. Chillicothe hosting Kirksville, and the Hornets get the win 34-14. And down in Kansas City, St. Michael taking on St. Pius. St. Pius takes this one 56-10. And there's still plenty more to come here on football tonight, so don't go anywhere coming up after the break. Hamilton trying to start the season 2-0. Can the sixth ranked team in Class 1 get it done? And Bishop of Blonde impressed in Week 1. Can the Golden Eagles keep it up? Tough matchup up in Rosendale. Stay tuned. You're watching Football Tonight. to football tonight right here on KQ2. The Hamilton Hornets made it to the Class 1 quarterfinals last year, losing to eventual state runner-ups Mid Buchanan. But the Hornets returning a lot of talent from that 2020 team, so expectations rather high for this team, especially when they're ranked in the top 10. To Hamilton we go, Hornets the sixth ranked team in Class 1, hosting Gallatin in week number two. Hornets facing third down, the run gets stuffed by a pack of dogs. Hamilton punts, but Gallatin can't find the end zone on their ensuing drive. Next, Hornet drive. Tucker Ross keeps it himself, gets some blocks on the right side, but Hamilton near the 10. Hornets looking to strike first in this one. Ross then just hands it off to Corbin Henderson. Henderson punches it in for the score. Hamilton comes out on top in this, in this one, shutting out Gallatin 28 to nothing. Down in Dearborn we go. KCI, Grand River Conference crossover. Panthers hosting the Wolverines. First half of this one, all defense. Wolverines with the toss. That is Muff. Botched it. The scramble for the ball. North Platte comes up with it, recovers it. Two drives later, 
Colton Kirkham draws back, and he's looking deep. Throws to Jace Gibson, but is picked off by Logan Kimbrell. Maisel unable to score. Good defense here in the first half. Panthers now. Kirkham again drops back. Pass tip picked off by Caden Israel, but as he tackled, Riley High takes the ball right away from him. Gives the Panthers the ball back. Weird turn of events there, but here we go. Maysville able to get some offense going second half. They win this one 28 to six. The Plattsburgh Tigers try to bounce back from a loss to Polo, hosting University Academy. Griffins, handoff is fumbled, and Nathan Bash for the Tigers comes up with it. Then Isaiah Howard drops back for the Tigers, looks deep for Stockton, double coverage, and it is almost picked off by Demarcus Paul. And here comes the Griffins now, handoff to Alonzo Jacobs. He goes up the middle, makes some tacklers miss, gets down the sideline and goes for a 75 yard touchdown. But Plattsburgh says not so fast. Howard throws the out route to Jackson Lewis into the corner of the end zone. That's a touchdown, but the Griffins too much for the Tigers and they take this one 42 to 22. More cross conference matchups. East Buchanan ranked eighth in class one, winning 42 nothing over the Trenton Bulldogs and West Platte hosting South Harrison down in Weston. West Platte getting a 44 to six victory. Princeton hosting Midway tonight and Princeton takes this one 34 to 16 and Polo welcoming Slater and they get this one 18 to six. Don't touch that remote because there's a lot more action coming your way. A top 10 showdown in eight-man football. Bishop Ablon traveling to North Andrew for a date with the Cardinals. And in the eight-man Grand River Conference, two longtime rivals meet head-to-head. -head. More from Albany and Stanbury coming up after the break. Welcome back to Football Tonight. Over the last few years, a few eight-man football teams rising above the rest. One of those teams, the Stanbury Bulldogs. The Bulldogs are one of the most successful programs in recent memory, starting the season 1-0 with a victory last week. But tonight, it's a rivalry game for the Bulldogs. Up to Stanbury we go for a Grand River Conference showdown. Bulldogs hosting Albany, two physical teams. After a quick 8-0 lead, Stanbury gives it back to Tucker Schieber. This one, 65 yards to the house. The second touchdown in the first quarter. He reaches the house three times in the first quarter. Two possessions later, brother to brother. Austin to Tyler Schwubach, 55 yards in the air. 30 to nothing, Stanbury. Brutus, the Bulldog, likes what he sees. Brutus, okay. All right, cool. The Schwubachs connect yet again. This time, 19 yards to extend the Bulldogs' lead to 38 after the two-point conversion. Stanbury rolls a 2-0 with a 50 to nothing victory. Some non-conference GRC games tonight. Worth County handling Cinto Christian. Tough go for the Lions tonight, 72-0. Pattonsburg picking up an 88-52 victory over Schuyler County. Down in DeKalb, Tigers hosting King City. Wildcats coming off a week one against North Andrew. King City dominating in the first quarter. Landon Wells, quick pass to Corbin Taylor who runs it up for the first down. We'll see more from Taylor tonight. And then Wells next, handoff to Parker Muff who had a great game last week and he continues it this week. He cuts through the line, breaks a few tackles, makes this one look easy, touchdown King City. Two point attempt is good and they lead eight to zero. The cab looking to get some points on the board. Devin Hall rolls out of the pocket, throws it to the sideline, but Corbin Taylor finds it and intercepts it. And still in the first quarter, King City moving the ball pretty quickly. Wells hands it off to the one who scored first, Parker Muff again. He gets a touchdown, making it look easy, and King City defeats DeKalb 72-6. High school football finally starting up for our friends across the Missouri River. After the break, we check in with the Troy Trojans as they host Hiawatha to kick off the 2021 season. In the top 10 showdown in eight-man football, Bishop LeBlanc traveling to North Andrew for a date with the Cardinals. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Every year, a few eight-man football teams separate themselves from the rest. 
This year, though, there are a lot of teams fighting for the top spots across the state, including two battling it out tonight up in Rosendale. Chuck Davis and 10th ranked Golden Eagles on the road visiting number 9 North Andrew. Physical game early on. Cardinals starting with the football. Braxton Linville around the edge, takes a hit on the sideline, gets up, gets right back into the ball game. Later in the drive, fourth down. Linville, the keeper, he's close. That's going to need a measurement. Long time measuring, but he's short, just inches short of a first down. Golden Eagles take over. Ensuing drive, Reggie Love starts going right. Bounces off of would-be tacklers, and he's got some room to run down the sideline. First down and a whole lot more in the Cardinals' territory. A few plays later, Andy Gardner to Julio Gann. He's making some guys miss. One guy, two guys, get off me. Three guys, touchdown, Bishop LeBlanc. Two-point conversion good, 8-0 at this point. Ensuing Cardinals drive. North Andrew takes nearly seven minutes off the clock. Andrew Goff on fourth down, touchdown. Right back in at 8-6 LB, though. Golden Eagles back on offense. Gardner getting the offense rolling. Finds Jake Carell knocked out of bounds, but picks up some big yards on the play. Let him drive fourth and 15. Gardner forced out. He's wrapped up, but he laterals with the Reggie Love. He trucks his way forward for a first down. LeBlanc caps off the drive with a Love touchdown, 16 to six, and the Golden Eagles go on to win this one. LB now two and zero on the year. They win 34-14. How about some 275 conference games? Nottoway Valley at East Atchison. East Atchison winning 84 to nothing. Rockport hosting Platte Valley. Blue Jays getting a 60 to 12 win. Over in Stewartsville, the Wildcats facing off against the Mound City Panthers in an eight-man matchup. First drive of the game, QB for the Wildcats, Doran Saunders, able to connect with Diesel Griffin. Same drive, Saunders finds the gap, able to continue the car's momentum. And then later on, Saunders again able to push through the defense for the first touchdown of the game. But the Panthers come back with their first possession. Quarterback William Rother makes pass to senior Will Young, who ran for a 55-yard touchdown. He wants everybody else on the field, scores for them. And then Panthers held on the momentum from there, winning 50-6. to Another 275 contest, South Holt hosting Southwest Livingston. South Holt takes this one 74 to zero. It's finally time for Kansas High School to kick off their 2021 seasons and one team trying to put two tough years behind them. Out in Troy, the Trojans hosting Hiawatha in their season opener. Midway through the first, Troy in with possession. Camden Anderson dropping back, launches the ball, connecting with Jarrett Norris for the 25 yard reception. Trojans marching down the field. Anderson scrambling out to his left, find a receiver in the end zone, extra point, no good. Trojans up 6-0, Hiawatha needing an answer. They're on the attack, dropping back, looking down the field, receiver wide open, but picking up a few extra yards for stumbling down. Red Hawks have to settle for a field goal to bring it to score within three. The Trojans get the season opening win though. They hold off Hiawatha by a final score of 12-10. And a few other Kansas scores, Riverside at Royal Valley, they get the win by three, 16 to 13. And then Donovan West hosting Blue Valley, they win this one 54 to eight. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. We'll announce the week one play of the week. You don't even know what it is, do you? No, I do not. They'll find out next. And it's time for our play of the week winner. Plattsburgh Isaiah Howard making a throw Mitchell can't make for a touchdown to Brock Stagel. Sorry, was that too much? No, you're good. You're good. Isaiah Howard to Brock Stagel for a touchdown. That's our play of the week. You can vote every week for our play. Go to our website, kq2.com. The features tab under contest. Voting goes from Monday at 5 until Friday at noon. It's okay. I was a center in high school. I played center. Just let that settle in for a second. Final thoughts from this week. Yeah, final thoughts. I cannot make that throw whatsoever. And Lafayette, we'll try. head coach Ryan Schroyer gets his first win this week at, for Lafayette. And also Mid Buchanan, they got a 42-0 victory on the road down at Southeast. That will do for football tonight. That's Mitchell Ribrol. I'm Chris Roush. We'll see you next Friday night with week three of football tonight.